Hello, you're hanging out with Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise, autoappraise.com. Inspecting today a 1959 MGA, early version MGA. The, the twin cam motors came out, I think, in 59. This is an earlier uh, four cylinder push rod design engine, um, about 1498 uh, cc's early horsepower I think around 68 to 70 horsepower was what uh, what they were advertised at odometer reading I could have written that down earlier difficult to discern that first number 81332 I've got the car up on ramps so we'll do under hood and under body and get to it. I'm not going to be able to drive it today. I'll fire it up and we'll let it run here in a few minutes. But the brake pedal is super low. And I had the guys put some brake fluid in it. But uh, they're going to need to be bled before the car can be driven. Had a very nice exterior repaint. And the fit and finish is nice. They had only internal door handles. Most people know that there was never a door handle on this particular body style, but the doors close nicely and line up good. The line at the bottom of the driver's door is slightly fatter, you know, protruding a little more. Fenders appear to have been changed during the restoration on this car. They're in pretty good shape from the back sides. And uh, going through with a digital paint meter. And then uh, some magnets, as you saw there on the front fenders. Right there, that door line is out just a little bit, but the door opens and closes nicely. Uh, the readings uh, varied substantially, so it was hard to get a good call on it, but we've got an exploded view done up to show the potential onlooker. If you're looking at this video and you're not the person that hired us, then you're seeing it later. Uh, I'm not representing this car for sale. It's a consignment car at a dealership here in Michigan. I'm merely going through the car and trying to depict what it is and what it's not and what, if anything, it needs. Right off the bat, it's going to need some brake work. The interior presents pretty nice. Door shelves are super clean. Let me get my flashlight out. These cushions may have had some partial repair or restoration work. There's a little bit of entry wear here on the bolster, as you can see. Seat belts were added. I'm not sure they came with this car. Interesting question. Any MGA fans, please feel free to comment. A little bulge there in the material, but all of this was redone. There's a boot cover and a convertible top that's not currently attached to the car that comes with it and uh, boot or uh, tonneau cover really. It's a full full compartment tonneau cover is what it really is. Carpet kit was likely changed at some point. Kick panel's done. Steering wheel is in very nice shape. Uh, the wood shows nicely and so do the gauges. Nothing really to discuss or complain about. A few little polishing marks and hairline scratches there on top of the dash. Those probably could be cleaned up some. I didn't I didn't uh, rub on them. Windshield frame's probably been replaced and so have the seals in pretty good shape. Uh, correct triplex uh, windshield laminated. Small wiper rub mark there. Just a couple small little sand pecks. Nothing. Some of it might actually come off. Wiper arms are in good shape. Most of the trim's in good shape. A little bit of patina on these original MGA badges. Those do not say 1600, do they? So it's an earlier production. 
unit. The grill bezel's got a little bit of patina, some kind of hairline general wear and scratching. I'm under fluorescent lights, so it's gonna look the worst here, a little better outside for sure. And again, I'd take it outside and show the potential buyer or onlooker, except we are, we're not gonna drive the car without uh, brakes. This you can see is a drum brake front and drum brake rear. The um, later versions in 1959, uh, the 1600s, uh, part of that upgrade was the front disc brakes. And then I think the twin cam cars got four wheel disc, or maybe that was an option. Not sure exactly how that broke down. Mirrors are in good shape. Uh, bonnet fits nicely. We'll pop that up here in a minute. Not much really to uh, discuss. A little bit of general carpet wear down in the foot wells, but I don't think um, this piece here pops out and there's a hole in the spare tire cover that protrudes in from the trunk. Seat backs show a little bit of wear. Nothing horrific. So there we are for interior. Tires are in great shape. I don't think there are many miles on those. And replacement knockoff wheels are in really nice shape. No pitting, scratching, or curbing. So nothing really to discuss there. Trunk release. We have a jack and a tool and a carpet kit. And a spare, matching spare with this cover. Looks to be in pretty good shape. Let me grab my flashlight. There wasn't complete repaint work done in the trunk. There's still some British racing green left over remnants. Somebody could stand to take the trunk apart and spend a day in here um, taping off and cleaning up and respraying these hinges which didn't get painted, and then the side panels and the back panel. But uh, that could be done without much effort. But at the end of the day, it's not done. Uh, floor tub is in really nice shape. Very sound uh, underbody. We'll peek at that here in a minute. Original or older carpet kit, general wear, needs some cleanup. Nothing to complain about much on the chrome. I think somebody changed the bumpers at one point. There's a few little hairline, uh, various marks and or scratches and or patina, but no major uh, complications with the bumpers or the trim. A little bit of scratching and dinging on the gas cap. Luggage rack shows nicely. The paint looks great. It's got, uh, I'm gonna sit down away from the car here, probably two and a half to three feet. And the reflective quality is super nice. Bold print. Here's a foot. Here's two feet. You can see that the reflective quality all around the car is uh, really nice. It's well sanded, well cut. Not too many paint flaws to uh, be told. Here's my uh, my exploded view you can slow down and kind of take a peek at this just a few little miscellaneous marks hairline scratches etc and nothing horrible it's going to look again worse under the fluorescent lights but a few hairline polishing scratches i think some of it could come out a little bit of orange peel right here in the edge of the bonnet and a couple of real small uh, fisheye contaminations Little tiny dots, can you see those? Just a couple of them, a few of them here and there. Out in the sun, I don't think much of any of this is going to be a, of concern. Uh, the digital meter did so-so around the car as far as giving us a reading of uh, paint and filler and whatnot. Normally, you'd be concerned if the bottoms of the panels didn't give you readings. And these door skin lips look fantastic. But somebody's obviously primed and blocked this car on multiple occasions. So 
my meter reads from 31 down and we're getting readings mostly in the high teens and 20s but the readings up high nine and a half readings at midpoint 21 and down low 11 so the bottom structure is really good nice and clean uh, the thickness 11 represents the thickness of about four or five dollar bills of surface on top of the metal so when you get readings on panels up here that um, say INFL over 30 like that well this isn't an area that would rust out but it is an area that you would prime and block a few more times so the gauge doesn't help us a ton on this car although it gives us a general idea that there's a lot of paint and clear on the car and it looks well well buffed and presents pretty nice so small chip right here really tiny and uh, really just not a whole bunch of a few little hairline scratches up here at the entry point and a few hairline scratches here where the top affixes to the car you can't feel them with your fingernail, so it's a good chance somebody somebody could, you know, rub them out. However, as soon as you put the top back on, you're going to have some issues again. So that pretty much describes the paint, the body, the chrome, you know, the trim. Lenses are all in great shape. Wheels and tires in great shape. We've covered the interior. We've covered the trunk. Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise. If you need an inspection, 800-301-3886. I can go out and conduct a video inspection for you. Personally, here in Michigan, Northern Ohio, and Northern Indiana. As I stall to recall where the prop rod is. Okay. Well, I had it a minute ago. So um, I can get a little bit of a read of some antifreeze in the tank. It's there couple uh, dual uh, SU carburetors. Um, they're reportedly rebuilt not too long ago. Pretty common. Engine bay is in just generally uh, unrestored condition. Someone neglected to repaint the hood hinges up here. Same, same issue. I would spend a good solid day or two taking this engine bay apart and cleaning it up and detailing it. Our original tags are in place. That one's very difficult to get a read on, and so is this one. Um, the riveted tag there on the side of the block, that is no longer there. So the engine bay structurally is sound. Cosmetically, you know, could stand some dressing. Uh, no obvious apparent collision seen on the aprons beneath. I'll show you that in a minute. I just remembered. True car expert right there. Hard at work. The uh, oil's in pretty good shape. Reasonable. Ignition components appear to be in decent shape. Somebody's repainted the valve cover. I'm sure they've had that off to uh, hydraulic uh, lifters in this situation, so they'll need to be adjusted from time to time. We'll hop under the car. Stock, control arms, independent front suspension, rack and pinion. They built about 100,000 of these cars, 101,000 I think it was, from like 1955 to 62 I believe was the last year for the MGA.
there was an access hole cut in the bottom of the front cross member and I'm guessing it was probably cut to get through at some point to the front um, oil pan bolts because it's kind of right under that section if you can take a look the bushings and suspension components nothing looks brand new down here older well greased the extensions up front are in nice shape I don't see any bit of collision or hook marks or compression on either on either extension some uh, seepage on the oil pan a little drip hanging right there but it doesn't look like anybody's freshly wiped it down to hide anything so it looks like that's about what it's doing uh, nothing major gathering on the carpet below where the car was and there's been a ton of cars parked in here so hard to tell what that's from the frame itself is in really nice shape for a non-restored, non-frame-off restoration, that is. The wood panels in the floor look really good. Um, aged appropriately, no, no rot. They may have been serviced at some point. This is a body-on-frame uh, vehicle. So the frame can be separated from the body. But overall, the whole underbody looks uh, this way. The MGAs came with a four-speed manual gearbox. I don't believe they came any other way. At least not uh, early on. The inner rocker structure seems to be, be pretty solid. Looks like on this um, inner sheet metal support, or the splash pan here uh, behind the driver's side front tire, somebody might have accidentally stuck a jack under there thinking they were going to lift the car and they should have gone in another three inches and caught a frame rail. As you can see, it's not supposed to be that way. It's a sheet metal part that can be bolted and unbolted and replaced probably for under $50. Looks like the parking brake was serviced at some point in time. down the car it's a nice straight car somebody definitely spent some time you know blocking it out and uh, putting a proper amount of time in the exterior presentation other than that door protruding just slightly you know and I think it's a great looking car all right let's get it uh, fired up Before we do that, let's take a quick peek at the exhaust and the rear end. Finish up down here. I fired it up to pull it up on the ramps, which is when I discovered we've got some brake issues. So, it starts up nicely. There was no puff of smoke or anything. Choke seems to be working as it should. Again, the wood seems like it's in pretty good shape. Exhaust system looks good. Semi elliptical leafs, multi leaf springs, it's the more common term. Rear end housing does not appear to have been out or restored. Backing plates and whatnot unrestored. Looks like some newer brake lines present and an electric fuel pump might have been added. A little bit of original British racing green there, so not positive if that was the original color or not. But the frame supports look pretty good. Some grease caked in there, various locations. But nothing else really to talk about underneath the back of the car. Gas tank looks like it's in nice shape. Chrome tip on the exhaust. Uh, the sheet metal in the back has had some uh, repair work. Uh, nothing too horrific in there. Hard to show you on the video. Got some still photos. Some filler squeezed through some small uh, 
holes that were in the back lower uh, body panel there a little bit of patina and age you know on the tail light bezels on those gaskets hard to say how old this restoration is and what components were reused a few other comments on regarding readings so uh, I stopped short of the other side but some of the upper areas where you would not get rust are showing to have been you know filled and blocked and filled and blocked primed and blocked so uh, and again I believe the fenders might have been changed just to finish this up 21 no read no read but looking at the door it's clear that the door skin is in wonderful shape nice easy lip edge to view and it closes nice to get the light out my apologies quick look at the rear jam seals have been changed don't believe I mentioned that earlier but again the doors look great so I don't detect that they're full of Mondo some priming and blocking Carpet gets decent, a little bit of British Racing Green still showing up underneath the dash. Again, a little more detail work would, uh, would be impressive. Won't be able to leave it running long because we've got low ceilings in here and they've got customers hanging out. So we don't want to get asphyxiated. But if they can get the brakes adjusted, I might be able to come back for the client and get it uh, test driven. Push button start. Not going to be able to warm it up enough to see. Fuel gauge is operational. Take a quick listen to the engine. in here. I'm going to go back through a last minute test of the uh, headlights and tail lights and um, finish up this report. Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise doing an early MGA. The uh, 
pre the pre the earlier 1959 let's call it I'm not sure what the cutoff date was in 59 where they made some advancements earlier 1498 cc engine four speed transmission drum brakes on all four corners looked at the title that the seller provided there's no liens on it and uh, the title number matches the sequence of the uh, body number 800-301-3886 if you need inspection work 300 guys on the ground happy to help you out anywhere I'm really the only one that shoots video inspections. Most of the guys will do about two to 300 photos and write an inspection. This client's gonna receive about 200 photos along with this video and uh, decide whether or not this is his dream car. It'd be easier to decide if we were, easier to decide if we were driving it down the road and feeling it. So that's gonna have to be perhaps a second step. Okay, thanks for watching, have a great day.